Hey, what's up guys, I'm KBHD here, and the HTC One looks to be pretty much the best phone of 2013 right now. And it's got a pretty awesome feature set to back that up. It has a great spec sheet, it has an awesome build quality, a whole bunch of awesome things about it, but one feature about it seems to be generating the most buzz that the most people are talking about, and that is the camera. So this is the ultra pixel explained. All right, so the traditional smartphone camera resolution is measured in megapixels. Four megapixel cameras, then eight megapixel cameras, then 12 and 13 megapixel cameras became the norm. So as we see all the specs of other phones like clock speed of the CPU and amount of RAM and all sorts of other things like battery size increase in number, we automatically assume that bigger is better with all these specs. And the same thing happens to the megapixel count. So now we see 12 and 13 megapixel cameras and the average customer just sort of assumes that a 12 megapixel is better than an eight megapixel, when then that's not necessarily true. The average consumer making this decision without actually knowing anything else about the camera, like the lens or the image processor, became known as the megapixel race. And that's still kind of seen today. But the megapixel count is literally just a resolution. It's the resolution of the image that the sensor takes. So an eight megapixel camera sensor will take a 3264 by 2448 image, which is significantly larger than anything that our TVs or computer monitors can natively show. Usually our best computer monitors can only show up to maybe five megapixels natively. So you will only be able to tell the difference between an eight megapixel and a 13 megapixel if you do some zooming or cropping or printing it on a really large size. So HTC has decided to take a risk and not get involved in the megapixel race and instead develop their own technology. Up till now, smartphone sensors and the cameras have stayed about the same size, but manufacturers have been cramming more and more pixels into those. So we've seen it go from four megapixels to eight, like we said, to 12 and 13, and even higher. And as you cram that many more pixels onto the same size sensor, the pixels get significantly smaller and smaller, which means you get less and less light per pixel. When you get less light in the image, or at least less light per pixel, you're gonna see more noise grain and worse low light performance. That's where HTC has decided to switch things up and cram far less pixels onto the sensor. They use a four megapixel sensor, which means that yes, there are far less pixels, but those pixels are a lot bigger, which means you will get more light and you'll get far less grain and you will get better low light performance. So yes, the HTC One is outfitted with a four megapixel camera. It takes four megapixel photos, very, very small photos, comparatively speaking. But these are huge pixels, which is where the ultra pixel name comes from. And since it's only a four megapixel sensor, HTC has decided not to even talk about the resolution count and completely change it over with ultra pixels and sort of mask that embarrassingly low megapixel count. So what's the difference between a four megapixel and a four ultra pixel camera? Well, nothing really. We haven't seen anything HTC said that has confirmed that there is any difference at all. I mean, they like to talk a lot about their technology, but as far as we know, Maybe smartphone sensors have gotten a tiny bit bigger over the years as we get bigger phones and we get more room in the internals, but really the individual pixel size has remained pretty small. So now the HTC One, while it does have the lowest megapixel count of any smartphone today, it also does have by far the largest pixels in any other sensor in any other high-end smartphone. So is the trade-off worth it? How does it perform? To be honest, paired with the F2.0 lens and the new HTC image processing chip, it's actually not a bad performer. As you can see, the photos that it takes in regular light are pretty average. There might not be a whole lot of dynamic range, but the photos are pretty good, even though they're not quite as sharp as say an eight or 13 megapixel camera. In low light, it is a stellar performer, but again, we're not sure how many people bother to take photos with their phone in low light. But if you compare it to something like the Nokia Lumia 920, which actually has a massive sensor, so it's a, a high resolution and slightly larger pixels, you'll notice that it's, it's performing at about the same level. These are really high-end cameras in low light because they let so much light in per pixel. On the video side of things, four megapixels is still significantly more than 1920 by 1080, so there is no sharpness problem with video. It takes pretty decent video, but again, dynamic range and color reproduction could be a little bit better, but that's, again, the HTC image processing. So there's no real problem with it being a four megapixel sensor, and uh, that's a good sign. Overall, it's not the best smartphone camera out there, even though it is one of the weirdest sounding when you say ultra pixel, but overall, HTC hasn't really revolutionized anything here. They haven't used any sort of crazy proprietary technology and layered sensors and any kind of crazy stuff like that. They haven't invented anything new, in fact, all they've done is decrease the number of pixels and boast about how big the pixels now are, which is 
one way of looking at marketing. They took a risk that happened to be a really good idea and dressed it up under some fancy marketing and coded it with a sweet name and voila, you have the Ultra Pixel. So there you go, that's the HTC One and the Ultra Pixel camera explained. Hope you guys enjoyed this quick video. If you did enjoy it, definitely feel free to give a thumbs up below. And I have a couple more interesting videos, like at least in the explained video series down below. So there's a link to a playlist below the like button. And if you wanna see more videos like this, definitely subscribe, but I won't take any more of your time. Go ahead and watch the rest of the explained videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Peace.